Hello and welcome to Guns and Gear. And in this video, I'm going to show y'all uh, some military bolos. Okay? And uh, kind of maybe have a little bit of conversation about big knives. Well, ever since I was a young boy, uh, I've liked the big knives. And I, I think a lot of that has to do with my uncle. Uh, I had an uncle that was in uh, World War II. He was a, a Marine in the South Pacific. And uh, at some point during that time, he uh, was in a poker game with some fellow soldiers, and he won a bolo knife, okay? And this is a U.S. military bolo knife. And he carried that thing for the rest of the time he was in the war. He thought it was a great uh, example of a fighting knife, and he just loved his bolo knife. And, of course, he brought it home with him. And uh, I saw that knife on many a camping trip and kind of fell in love with it myself. So when I was a teenager... I got my dad, I saved up some money, and I got my dad to buy me this right here. And I've had this for a very long time, and I have really beat on this knife. Um, it's, a, it's an excellent uh, camping knife. Now, yeah, I did break the tip off, and y'all can see that right there. And I had to reprofile that tip, and I didn't bring it to a sharp point, because uh, I didn't want to break it off anymore. But it's a great knife. Now, this happens to be a 1917 uh, version of the U.S. military bolo. And that was the last version that I know about uh, of them making the bolo knife. Now, they may have made the bolo knives after that, but it was a 1917 version. Okay. Now, I'll give you a little bit of history on the U.S. military and the use of bolo knives. Uh, to, at the end of the 1800s, we were involved in some unpleasantness in the Philippines, okay? And in 1897, um, the uh, U.S. military saw the value of bringing a bolo knife into the military. Now, I don't have any pictures. I've never seen one. I don't know what that knife looks like. But later on, they came out with other versions like the 1904 version and the 1905 version. And I have seen photos of them, but, I, and, but I've never actually held one. And they have a very similar handle to this knife right here, okay? Except they had like an S uh, guard, and the blade had uh, swept in the back a little bit, and it had a rounded tip. Now, for the U.S. military, just like the, uh, in the Philippines, where it is believed the bolo originated, the knife was used for clearing out brush, you know, uh, chopping small wood, uh, thing, uh, task of that nature. And originally, uh, you know, folks like the hospital corps and machine gun squads, things like that, were issued the knives. You know, so they, the hospital corps, of course, were cutting down small poles to use for litters or maybe to put up tents for their field hospitals. And the machine gun squads would use them to clear out, I guess, shooting paths or to clear out areas to use their machine guns. So what they found was that the bolo knife really fit the, uh, fit the needs uh, fairly well early on. In uh, 1909, they changed the bolo knife. And what they basically did was make it a straight back. And this is a version... This is an example of a 1909 uh, U.S. military bolo, okay? Now, this is quite a, quite a piece of steel here. As you can see, it has fairly thick stock on it. It had, uh, The specs say 14-inch blade, but this one, when you measure it out, is just a little bit over 13 and 3 quarter inches. It's not quite 14 inches. And you can see that it doesn't appear, anyway, that the blade has ever been... Uh, broken and reprofiled. But at any rate, this is a handful of knife right here. And I would imagine that this would actually make quite a weapon if pressed into uh, service. But what makes that a very effective chopper also makes it a burden to carry around all the time. It is a very long, it is a very heavy knife. And when you add in the very thick, heavily built sheath that came with these knives with the brass and everything involved I imagine it was quite quite uh, uncomfortable to carry around all the time 
So in 1910, they completely redesigned the Bolo for the US military. And this is basically what it looked like. Okay. Now this is another example of a 1917, but uh, from what I've read, uh, the two knives basically look the same. They just use lesser quality materials uh, and workmanship. But this knife right here, when I first saw it, I thought it was a uh, 1910 version of the knife because it is a uh, little, it's, it's little bit thicker stock than my first Bolo. And look at the handle work done to the knife. And this is a really a nice example. This one's in very good shape. Okay, and the markings on it actually say model 1917 and I hope that shows up. And this one was also stamped uh, that it was manufactured in 1918. Okay, now this knife is pretty clean. Uh, really the only marks on it is from the brass uh, from the sheath, pulling it out of the sheath. Other than that, the bluing is completely intact and it's never even been sharpened. And after I bought it, I found out that it had a few markings on it that made it kind of uh, rare. And therefore, I didn't really mess with it. I just kind of left it alone there. Uh, I actually uh, bought it to use, but decided not to mess it up since it was in such good condition. Now, getting back to the conversation about big knives. Uh, you know, uh, like I said earlier, always been a fan of the big knife, but I do understand that the big knife will never outperform the axe, okay? Especially when you're starting to talk about cutting larger size wood. Now, if you're camping, backpacking, like this time of year, it's in the middle of June, and here in the south it's hot, right? You're not gonna need a fire to warm yourself as a matter of fact, if I build a fire at all, it's going to be to heat up water or to cook, okay? I can get by with using smaller fuel, all right? And a big, that's where a big knife excels. A big knife is just fine for messing with wood that's an inch, two inches in diameter. You can even stretch it out maybe to three inches in diameter without really using up a lot of your energy, okay? It'll do just fine. And that's really where a big knife comes into play. Now, you know, a lot of folks here on YouTube uh, feel differently than I do. Matter of fact, some prominent channels has uh, pretty much stated that the big knife is the only thing to use when you camp or backpack, or the best thing to use. And uh, uh, I've even had one individual talk about how, you know, different terrain and things of that nature. Well, I've been very fortunate I have uh, camped a lot in swamps and I've camped a lot, uh, backpacked a majority of the Appalachian Trail. Um, I've had the opportunities to uh, backpack in the Andirondacks in, in uh, upstate New York and uh, Wyoming in the Yellowstone National Park and the Rockies and I've had a, a pretty uh, uh, fortunate opportunities to backpack and to do a lot of camping. All right, so I've seen hot weather, cold weather, sub-zero weather, uh, rainy weather, snowy weather, all that, all that type of things. And I can tell you now that if you're going to go on a, uh, a weekend trip, two, three days, and you're only going to mess with small wood, then there's nothing wrong with a big knife. And there's plenty of good examples. Here's a good example right here. This is the Cold Steel Trailmaster. And I bought this when they first came out. Uh, and uh, you can see there's carbon V, carbon five steel, made in the USA. I've had this knife uh, since the early 90s. Okay, and this is a, uh, a good example of a large camp knife today, right? Well, let's look at the size difference when you place them alongside these bolos. Okay, it doesn't look all that much big anymore. Okay. And it looks rather anemic compared to this knife right here. And I'll tell you what, this knife is at least twice as heavy. The thing about it is uh, knives have their purpose and there's no one knife that can do everything, but there's no one knife either that can outdo an ax when you start talking about cutting wood like five and a half, six inch, seven inch in diameter. You can cut it with this, cut it down, 
But for those folks that want to talk about calories, you're going to expend a ton more calories with a knife than with an axe. Okay? And that includes other knives, like I have an RTAC, and I've just beat this thing to pieces. It's a great knife, but not in comparison to an axe. And I'm going to go further that I think that the Bolo style of knives are actually superior to the knives we generally are thinking about uh, for use in camping. And that is because of their basic design, and that is that they, ha they put a lot of weight forward. Okay? If you look at these designs, there's a lot of weight forward in that knife. Okay? And because of that, it has a sweet spot probably from here to, to about right here. You can get a lot of power in chopping with, uh, with knives that are set up in, with the Bolo style. And that has been my mileage. Okay? Now, I'll be the first one to tell you that, <clears throat> hey, I got friends of mine that say that, you know, hey, the knife is the thing to have, and that's what they're going to use. And I'm never going to carry this knife and an axe, okay? Uh, there's just no purpose in it. I'm going to carry this knife or an axe. But I may just carry this knife and an axe because when you're talking about weight, this thing is a featherweight compared to that. Okay, and weight does matter when you're carrying everything on your back. But maybe not as much as some would, uh, some would describe. All right, well, this is my video uh, basically talking about some uh, these Bolo knives. I do still like the Bolo shape to the point where I've gotten a new one, okay? And this knife right here is from Tops, and it's called the Power Eagle, okay? Now, this has a 12-inch blade, and it says it's supposed to be, on the website, it says a quarter-inch thick stock. Well, look at that compared to the... Trailmaster, there's no way that's a quarter inch stock, but it's still a pretty heavy, heavy built knife, and it has those features of the Bolo that I like, which is that weight forward in the design of the blade. And it's a pretty good chopper. I like this knife. I've used it a couple times, and I'll be doing a video on this, kind of showing uh, what its capabilities are. Now, it also has this right here, and I'll go into more detail, but that's a waste. All right, well, that's uh, talking a little bit about the military bolos and big knives in general. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. And uh, as always, shoot straight on the range and in life. Thanks.